Hi, my name is Ton. I'm 2021 pharmacist candidate. Today, I'm going to present about drug named Glaborite. Glaborite is an anti-diabetic drug that used to treat type 2 diabetes. It belongs to a drug class called sulfonylurea that stimulates the beta cells to produce the insulin to lower the blood glucose in the body. Glaborite has been used widely because cut of treatment is affordable for most patients and it's very effective in reducing blood glucose. However, the long-term use of glaborite can cause the beta cell to burn out and eventually lose their effectiveness. The major side effect of glaborite is hypoglycemia and weight gain. Therefore, patients should be aware of hypoglycemia symptoms and their weight while taking glaborite. Different from glipizide and glimepiride, glaborite is not recommended in patients with renal or liver failure and patient over 65 years old because glaborite is the longest acting sulfonylurea and can cause more and prolong hypoglycemia. As I mentioned above, glaborite is used to treat type 2 diabetes and it can reduce the A1C by 1 to 2% like metformin, but it's rarely used as a first line therapy or monotherapy. Instead, glaborite is used as an add on therapy with metformin in addition to diet and exercise to control the blood glucose. The common side effects of glaborite are hypoglycemia, weight gain, blur vision, and GI problems such as epigastric fullness, heartburn, and nausea. The GI side effects should go away within 2-3 to three weeks. If not, alternative options should be considered for the patient. Glaborite can cause some serious side effects in some patients such as cardiovascular event risk, hemolytic anemia. Therefore, glaborite is not a good choice for diabetic patients with cardiovascular disease. The initial dose of glaborite micronized brand name Glanate is 1.5 to 3 mg one a day with breakfast. At maximum dose is 12 mg a day. The initial dose of glaborite micronase brand name Diabeta is 2.5 to 5 mg once a day with breakfast and maximum dose is 20 mg a day. The difference between glinase and Diabeta is that the glinase contains smaller particles that allow the medication to be absorbed better by the body. Therefore, glinase is given at a lower dose compared to Diabeta. About the pharmacokinetic, glaborite is significantly absorbed within one hour and reach the peak level at about four hours. Glaborite is extensively bound to serum protein, mainly albumin. Therefore, the displacement from protein binding site by other drugs may lead to severe hypoglycemia. Glaborite is excreted as metabolite in the bowel and urine, approximately 50% by its weight. And its elimination half-life is 10 hours, which much longer compared to glipizide and glimepiride. That's why glaborite can cause prolonged hypoglycemia. Glaborite is metabolized by CYP2C9. Its major metabolite is 4 trans hydroxyl and second metabolite is 3 6 hydroxyl derivative. They are both inactive metabolite. While taking glaborite, patients should monitor their blood glucose regularly and have A1C measured every 3 to 6 months. Also, patients should have their renal function checked because reduced renal function can make the drug stay longer in the body and lead to hypoglycemia. It's very important for the patient to recognize the hypoglycemia symptoms such as shaking, sweating, confusion, busy, being nervous and anxious. Patients also must be aware of the situation that can cause hypoglycemia like after exercise, missed meal, or the use of high dose. In addition, patients will be encouraged to exercise 30 minutes a day most of the week with a healthy diet to help control their weight and also blood glucose. And this concludes my presentation today. Thank you for listening.